So, you know, I can specify a bunch of stuff about a solenoid. I guess the easiest thing to do is to imagine that you have this physical solenoid and sort of uh, start imagining the kind of parameters that might be um, relevant. So, you know, I have something that looks like this. I'll just draw it with a single wire. But uh, for the purpose of our calculation, it doesn't actually matter if it's a single wire that's looping around a lot or it's uh, multiple rings the way, way I had drawn it before. Um, so let me just uh, draw some structure to indicate um, the geometry of the solenoid. So the solenoid, it'll look like something that's wound around the cylinder of radius r. Uh, of capital radius R. And um, so let me wind it around this way. Here it's coming out of the board, and each time it's wound around, so that here it's going into the board. Good. With this, um, let me draw the direction of the magnetic field that we figured out before. Magnetic field inside should point upward direction wise. And magnetic field outside, if there is any magnetic field outside, it should point downward. Good? Okay. All right. Uh, so I, um, there's the obvious current I that's flowing through the wire. And here's the one more thing I feel like I need to specify. Um, imagine you have a solenoid that has, you know, this uh, dense uh, of uh, wires, and imagine it's, you know, half as dense. Like, do you imagine that will affect your magnetic field, right? So what I want to specify here is essentially the density of the loop. So uh, let me specify it this way. If I take some length of solenoid, let's say for some length of solenoid, there are n loops. Or another way to say that would be uh, the solenoid has a loop density. Or I could call this loop density of um, n, lowercase n, is equal to some number of loops per length of the solenoid. Right? Yes? Yeah, I want to uh, specify there's a density because you know I'm imagining this solenoid to, to be infinitely long. So unlike the toroid, um, the density is a better way to specify it. Otherwise, I have an infinite number of loops. OK, okay um, so we've done a lot of the steps, a lot of the preliminary steps. So what's necessary here is a choice of the loop. How you would choose a loop, Amperian loop, so that will allow you to calculate the magnetic field. Um, so let me just say, all right, I want to know the magnetic field at this point. What is magnetic field here? That's my question. Uh, how would you pick the loop? Let's just start out with a uh, loop that's going through this point. What would that look like? That's the you know, easy part. a straight line parallel to the magnetic field, right? That's how you should pick it. That's the easiest thing to do. So let me just pick it that way. So now I can just keep going forever. I have to close the loop. This is the one segment of the loop. So uh, what I have to do is, all right, this loop is going to have some height h. And I have to think about a way how I'm going to close up this loop. Well, um, this, a lot of this reminds me of what I did for sil uh, the plane of current. So I'm going to turn 90 degrees here, knowing that this 90 degrees here will give me zero um, the line integral. But this is where I run into difficulty here. Um, so I can you know, come, out, come in from outside and go outside. And this is the question, how am I going to close it here? Do I have some symmetry that lets me say that the magnetic field outside is same as the magnetic field inside? We don't have that. With a plane, you had a 180 degree rotational symmetry. Here, inside and outside are very different. Point that's inside here and point that's outside here, that's very different. There's no transformation that will take one point to the other. So 
And this is the point that your textbook just uh, skirts over. They just say magnetic field outside is zero. So let me show you the set of steps that will allow you to prove that magnetic field outside is actually zero. This is what I'm going to do. I don't quite know how to close this loop, so I'm just going to imagine keep going. I'm just going to keep going, going, knowing that I do have to close it at some point. But I can keep going forever because this length of the L segment here, it's not accumulating any uh, line integral of b. So I can keep going without any consequence. Um, and when I come out far enough, I uh, imagine that, OK, I came out far enough. Now I'm actually going to close this loop. How far do you think is far enough? Like if I write down what this distance r is, what do you think that r should be? I am going to let this r go to infinity. And letting this r go to infinity is far enough for a particular criterion. And that particular criterion is at this uh, you know, point here, where it's uh, arbitrarily far away from the solenoid, I can say my magnetic field here is actually 0. Or you know, as r goes to infinity, magnetic field goes to 0. How do I know that? This is what I would imagine. You know, imagine this is an infinitely long solenoid. So when I'm near it, it looks like a solenoid. Imagine stepping very, very far away from it. As you step far away, what does it look like? Not a point. It's an infinitely long solenoid. What does? Oh, it looks like a line of current, right? What did a, a line of current magnet? What did the magnetic field due to a line of current look like? What? How did it change as a distance? Yeah, so 2 pi, I don't care. Divide 1 over r. Yeah, so since so that's the actual relationship. The magnetic field should go as 1 over r. That's the result that we know from previous derivations. So we know that magnetic field will go to 0 as r goes to infinity. So this is my loop. It's not something that you can draw on a finite surface, but this is how I'm going to start. So um, well, let me do the calculation then. So uh, let me, I only have a couple minutes left, so let me just kind of hurry through this calculation. So the calculation I would uh, imagine doing is, OK, the write down Ampere's law, b dot dl is equal to mu naught i enclosed. All right, so I have uh, four distinct segments to think about, right? Segment one, two, three, four. What's a b dot dl for segments two, three, and four? Zero for each individual one of them. Because it's perpendicular, because magnetic field is zero, and because it's perpendicular again. So this integral just comes down to a line integral over segment one, which would be the magnetic field that we are trying to find. Uh, and we already argued that it's a uniform along this distance, right? Yes? So magnetic field we are trying to find times the height. So it would be b times the height of this loop. That's equal to mu naught times how much current am I enclosing? Height times lowercase n uh, uh, times i, right? Yeah, so it'll be. H and I. OK, H cancels out. Good. That's sort of what I was hoping for. Um, so I, this is the result I get using this loop. Um, magnetic field inside the solenoid is equal to mu naught and I. It's a pretty simple result. And we are actually going to be using it from time to time. And this is the argument I want to make to say I want to actually argue two different things. One, I want to argue that the magnetic field inside the solenoid is uniform. Does this support that? Right? It, it, this expression has no dependence on where this segment is. It can be in the center. It can be on the side. As long as you don't go across the current, uh, as you move the segment around, nothing changes. 
What that means is the magnetic field inside the solenoid must be uniform. And I can actually imagine doing the same thing with this segment here. So you know, I had to study this out, out at infinity because I had to know that this segment will contribute zero um, uh, contribution to the line integral. But imagine that I deform my loop this way. I'm going to bring this in from infinity. So that this now looks like this. Instead of this segment being way out than infinity, it's going to have some finite distance. When I do that, um, does anything on the right hand side change? No, amount of current time and closing still hasn't changed. On the left hand side, does this uh, uh, line integral change? No, that didn't change, which means there's no room for this line integral to be anything other than zero. It has to be zero. There's no other value it can possibly be. In fact, all it, it, that statement is true all the way up until this point, until you actually cross this. Which means, uh, because this line integral has to be zero by all the other things I constrained, that means, well, here it's also still zero. OK, I had a demo to show this, but I'm out of time. Let me show that um, at the beginning of the class on Monday. Um, so, but this is the proof that the magnetic field just outside the solenoid is zero. Unlike magnetic field just outside the loop, which is not zero. Yes. It's a surprising result. I'll, I'll just say that much and demonstrate it with the demo next time.